understand. So if you want to be smart, you want to have wisdom, he give it all. He got it right here. Right here. Jump down to verse, uh, verse 10. Go ahead. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. Because he's going to give you faith. Because you know you banking on God. You're not banking on a man. You're not banking on Social Security. You're not begging on a 40 hour check. You're not begging on haircuts. You're not begging on this. You're begging on God first. He's first. But when you don't have that wisdom, you fear man. You fear your boss. You fear everybody but God. He's at the bottom. Go ahead. Verse 12. To deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh forward things. That's your boss, too. He'll deliver you from the evil man. He'll get you a good boss. If you want to. If you will have fear, he'll find you a good job. So you won't break the Sabbath. Go ahead. 13. Who leads the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. Go ahead. Who rejoice to do evil and delight in the forwardness of the wicked. This is what these men are doing. They rejoice to do evil. They're telling us to buy and sell. They're telling us to eat pork, catfish, all this stuff they tell us to do. But we got to have discretion from the book. We read the book, we find out what we must do. Go ahead. 15. Whose ways are crooked and they forward in their paths. Mm -hmm. To deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Even me, he showed you how to not get caught up in the trap of the flattering of a woman. He said he'll deliver you from the evil man too, from the women. He'll show you what man to pick. He'll show you what woman to pick. It ain't just one side of here. If we just start out to deliver you from the ways of the evil man, now we coming down to the flattery of the woman. Is he? Go ahead. 17. Which forsaketh the God of her youth and forgetteth the covenant of her God. Which forgetteth what? The covenant of her God. So if she ain't coming with the covenant, if he ain't coming with the covenant, why are you there? That ain't fearing God. Whoever got the strongest will gonna win. You better have a strong will when you're dealing with people. I had a lady one time tell me, she was dating this guy, she said, well, he like to eat pork and then he want to kiss me. Like, <laughs> but you, what, what, why you dating him? He was saying the covenant, why you dating him? I'm like, hey, you know the law. I ain't need to get into it. Go ahead. We finished? Yeah, we finished. Let's go to Acts chapter 5. Let's go to Acts chapter 5. Let's get that phone right now. Not that kind of yes. yeah. Yeah, turn it on. Acts chapter 5. And wisdom is going to help you from this book. It's going to develop fear. <clears throat> Acts chapter 5, and verse 1. <laughs> Boy, the fear of God will keep you faithful now. Even with your wife. Even with your husband. Yes, sir. You got to make sure you do the right thing. Everybody's an individual. I'm telling you. Yes. Acts chapter 5 and verse 1. Let me show you about this husband and wife. Now this is the time when they were set, Israel was selling all their land and they agreed to give the money, the proceeds from the land of their own. They agreed to give it to the priests. But you had the husband and wife try to do some slick stuff and God seen it. Acts chapter 5 verse 1. Go ahead. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. So she was part of the private privy. Me name my private. Did it private. Thought nobody would see it. God see it all, y'all. <laughs> see it all. That's why I just go ahead and repeat. God know you've seen it. I know you see my mind go down. Forgive me, God. Forgive me. I just know he's seen it. That's what you got to go into fear. Don't play around with it. What happened? Go ahead. But Peter said, And the night, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep that part of the price of the land? He like, I bet, I bet. He was saying, I bet, how you go there? Why did Satan get in your mind and tell you to keep my part, part of it? Satan all around him. Yes, sir. Go ahead. He, he lied to the Holy Ghost. 
Go ahead. Verse 4. While it remained, was it not thine own? He said, while it remained, it was yours. You said you're going to give it to the priest. And they will distribute uh, it, distribute it amongst all the Israelites evenly. Go ahead. And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Mm -hmm. Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Oh, so he thought he lied to the man. That's why God tells you not to fear man. Man ain't got no power. Look what happened to him. Go ahead. Verse 5. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all of them that heard these things. So time he said that God took his breath away from him just like that. He died. Boom, hit the ground. No breath. Over oh, some land, over some money? Yeah. Mm. That's why we got to learn how to fear God. We got to learn and that faith going to be it because you say, man, I know he's seeing that. I'm going to go ahead and quickly repent. Maybe just tap me a little bit. Don't kill me. Go ahead. Now his wife coming on the scene. She's going to have an opportunity to save herself. That's why I tell women, if you mad, don't be following your husband. Now you're doing wrong. You go ahead and set it straight. And she had an opportunity to set it straight. But let's see what happened to her. Go ahead. Verse 6. And the young man arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. Yes, sir. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. She didn't even know what was going on. The guy had a lot of pride in and talked to him. God killed him in pride. She didn't know. Go ahead. And Peter answered unto her, tell me whether he sold the land for so much. So he gave her the opportunity to come clean. Tell me. Mm -hmm. What's she going to do? Go ahead. And she said, yay, for so much. Follow her husband. Yeah, he told me to say this. Mm -hmm. Don't lie now. Go ahead. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Mm. Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Uh, they will kill you the exact same way. Hallelujah. Amen. She had she had a better chance of telling the truth. Go ahead. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. Mm. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. See, I just want to show y'all this, this builds faith. Yes, it does. Because it happened to the Israelites. We the same people now. Those like great, great, great uncles, granddaddies, all that. We all the same people. So we got to know what's going down in this book and understand who the players of the book is so we can relate. Go ahead. Verse 11. And great fear came upon all the church. What came upon all the church? All the fear. Fear. Yes, sir. That's, the, that's what we got to have, y'all. Fear. And believe me, man would not fear, would not respect, and he won't follow anybody if he don't have the fear sometimes. But we get men to fear. We need to get God that's we need to get God that fear. Not man. Go ahead. And great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. I bet it did. Go ahead. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. Yes, sir. And they, Go ahead. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. So they started doing great signs and wonders, healing people. Go ahead. And of the rest, there's no man joined himself to them, but the people magnified them. Mm -hmm. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women. Oh, all because of fear? Yeah, fear powerful. You find out you, <laughs> that man over there kid, you, you all right, right? Mm -hmm. Or you find out your boss about to fire you for not fixing something right. Oh, you ain't right. I'm just trying to make sure you understand the language term as best as I can. Go ahead. 15. And so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Well, you see the power of, of fear in God. He said the shadow. He passed by the man. He got healed. By Peter's shadow. <laughs> That's powerful. Right? That was, I want that. I want that. Go ahead. 16. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, everyone. Everyone. Nobody walked away without getting healed. But he had, you had to have a great example. God killed to the, that husband and wife first. The great fear now, okay, man, we better straighten up. We better straighten up. 
So this is why these lessons need to be taught. These examples need to be explained. Because it helps us. Let's go to Philippians chapter 2. Fear is the key. And I'm going to show you that. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. Can you get it, brother? Go ahead. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have also obeyed, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but so said that, not in my presence only. Because, you know, you got a lot of people be good and the boss around. But God, we can't see him. So we got to develop this God in our mind like, okay, we know he got a representative, which is an angel right here, write everything down that we're doing. He said, in Ezekiel, I got angels walking to and from the earth, recording everything. The eyes of God. Ezekiel chapter 8, I think, 8 or 9. Go check it out. They're getting a report card ready. And they got to submit it to the Lord. This is what Jeffrey Leon Parker did. And I got to stand before the God and answer for it all. Just like everybody else. Go ahead. Well, for my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. How do you work out your salvation? With fear and trembling. And trembling meaning that I lied, man, I'm going to be trying to repent. I stole, I'm going to be trying to repent. I better work it out with fear and trembling. And for what we just read, we understand God ain't playing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. His good pleasure. Go ahead. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. How many of us murmuring? I got to get up and go to Sabbath class. Man, we got to keep the holy day. I don't really feel like. But if it's something you want to do, you excited. Perky. Looking good. Got your best clothes on. Got everything on. Looking good. But when it comes to the Lord, you sure like, uh, well, I'm just here. Throw everything on the table. And you expect God to be your armor? You expect God to protect you? He's not. Because your sacrifice is an honor. Just like Cain was it. Go ahead. 15, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. Yes, sir. We are amongst the crooked nation. We shine like lights. Don't get a confused thing that, okay, man, at least I ain't doing what they're doing. Yeah, you don't look like you're a light, because all this stuff right here is evil. You better compare yourself to this book and read these examples. You'll find out, man, I got a lot of work to do. That's what I find out. I don't know about y'all. I got a lot of work to do. Go ahead. 16. Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. This is what he tells us to hold him, the word of life, so he can rejoice in the day of who? Christ. What day is that? The seventh trump. He called you up in the first resurrection. That's what we want. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's what I want. Excuse me. I hope y'all want the same thing. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Fear builds faith. It's a faith check and a fear check. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 10. Just making sure that we understand what a preacher is supposed to be doing and the congregation is supposed to be doing. Verse 10, brother, go ahead. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. This is what I do. Before the Sabbath, we're trying to find out some words to tell you all. They're going to help your faith. They're going to help your fear of God. I don't supposed to sit up here and tickle your ear. I'm supposed to scare the hell out of you. That's my job. To scare the hell out of you. These people don't preach about the lake of fire no more. 
All they talk about money, cause, possession. Why you don't preach about that? Because it don't mean nothing to God. Go ahead, bro. The words of the wise are as gold and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. That one shepherd is Jesus. You can bang on these words. Amen. They're going to come to pass because God said, I'm not a man and I should lie. Go ahead, bro. And further by these, my son, be admonished. Of making many books, there is no end. Mm -hmm. And much study is the weirdness of the flesh. Go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. This is what I'm getting to. This is the conclusion of man. That means the end. Go ahead. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. So y'all think fear is not important? He said this is the whole duty. Fear God and keep his commandments. Yes, sir. If you don't know the commandments, you're in big trouble. I'm in big trouble. But the fear got to be there. And then you'll build your faith. Go ahead. For God shall bring every work into judgment. How many? Every work. Everything that we do in this body is going to come up in judgment. That's why you need to ask God for I want to know when I'm dying. I want to know so I can ask God to forgive me of all my sins. I think about Hezekiah. Hezekiah, God told him to get his house in order. I think he missed a perfect opportunity. People look at him, he got 15 more years, but God warned him. He said, look, man, get your house in order. I'm going to go ahead and kill you tonight. So if you get your house in order, it's the resurrection, man. He give you the opportunity to get it right. But so many people still want to hold on to this life. I want to make sure I die right. I don't want to die in my sins. Period. You finished? Go ahead. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And no said. If that don't put no fear in your heart, nothing will. Hey, that, that'll do for the day. Let y'all want some more. <laughs> now nah, we're gonna close out. Playing from Galaxy Note 8. But we're gonna take up the offer. We're gonna take up the offering. Anybody got anything to give? It's over there. We're gonna read the announcements. Fear. This will go down. We're gonna teach you how to be fearful, God. He said, "He a jealous God." No halter tops, no low cut blouses, no leggings, no body suits, no ripped jeans, no cleavage showing, no bra straps showing, no short skirts or dresses. Be mindful of your dresses and skirts because when you sit down, they can come up and show your thighs. This can be a distraction from the lesson. There will be no cross dressing. Men should not wear women clothing, nor women wearing men clothing. If this happens, you will be asked to leave until you can dress appropriately. Romans 12 and 1. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Cell phones and tablets. If you're using one during the lesson, please make sure you are not on anything that isn't pertaining to the lesson. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, or etc. Baptism reminder. Okay, also, uh, I want the feast coming up, and you got certain people going to bring certain things. We want to make sure that you bring it, it uh, bring it, uh, is correctly. So we're going to try to inspect everything. If you're going to bring something to the feast, take a picture of the ingredients and send it to me on my uh, cell phone. So we make sure you can bring nothing that's living. It got yeast in it. You know what I'm saying? Got to make sure. No swine, any ingredients from swine and all that stuff. Y'all know they get tricky, right? We just got to do the best we can. 
But if you're gonna bring some, send me the ingredients. If you don't have a cell phone number, my cell phone number, I give it to you. But like my brother said, if anybody need to get baptized, just let me know. This is the season to do it good. It's getting hot. So, anything else? All right, we're gonna stand and close out. Mm -hmm.